Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. That's Revelation 22, verses 1 through 5. When you hear that description of what the future looks like, what kind of emotion comes to mind? It seems to me like a picture of pure joy. That is the joy that awaits the children of God. Do you remember in the parable of the talents, this is Matthew 25, the parable of the talents when, when that five-talent servant brings the five extra talents that he had earned to his master, what the master says to him? It's the exact same thing that he says to the two-talent guy. When the two-talent guy brought the two extra talents, the master says the same thing to both of them. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. That's, that's what God has in store for us. That's what he wants to share with us. He just wants to enjoy being together. And what awaits us and what awaits God even is the joy of being together. Enter into the joy of your master. The, the good news that Jesus came to share is good news. It is news about joy. And, and think about all the times that Jesus shares messages about the kingdom, and, it, and it's a message of joy. He, he compares the kingdom to, to a banquet. Or, uh, he compares it to a wedding feast. He compares it to, uh, to uh, a pearl of great price. That, that you, you would be willing to sell everything you have to grab hold of this pearl and you would enjoy that pearl. That's what God wants for us. He wants our joy. There's the account in the Gospel of John of the very first miracle that Jesus performed. It was a wedding banquet itself, a wedding feast. And Jesus provided the wine for the wedding feast. He wanted to share joy with people. Uh, there's the parable of the prodigal son. When the prodigal son finally get, comes to his senses and comes home, and his father is waiting for them, waiting for him, what does he do? He throws a party, kill the fattened calf. Bring the robe and the ring and the sandals and let's enjoy ourselves. And that, of course, is a picture of what God wants to do with us. He wants to enjoy being together. Of course, there are all kinds of things in life that are difficult to enjoy. And when we think about the fruit of the Spirit, and the second fruit of the Spirit is joy, and we think about how the Spirit wants to grow joy in us, that's not to say that he wants us to be oblivious to the terrible things that happen in our world. It's not to say that he wants us to deny them or just bury our head in the sand. There are, of course, terrible things that happen in the world. There are, I mean, 
I don't feel like I need to name them off for you. Terrible things that have terrible things that people don't cause. Weather, uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, etc. There are diseases. Maybe some of you are dealing with a difficult diagnosis right now. There are terrible things that people do cause. It, and, I mean, let me, let me step back and say, I think in some ways people have caused, I don't, I don't mean any sort of direct thing, but even those terrible things I've already named that we don't have direct control over, I think even those things are in some ways tied to Genesis 3, uh, that they would not be here if the first human pair had not eaten that fruit that we would not be dealing with earthquakes or cancer. And certainly, when we get to Revelation 22, that time period, we're not going to be dealing with earthquakes and cancer there. But directly, we don't cause those things today. There are things that people, terrible things that people do cause directly. If you still get a newspaper, any day of the week, you can look in that newspaper and see what I'm talking about there. There's going to be people with pictures in the paper talking uh, with story about oh, what, whatever they were arrested for. There are terrible things that happen. God doesn't want us to deny that or ignore it. He wants us actually to enter into it and help and share his joy even in those circumstances. I'm thinking here about Matthew 25, not the parable of the talents, but the, the story right after that where Jesus says, when the Son of Man comes with his angels and sits on his throne, he's going to separate people like the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he's going to say to the ones on his right, those sheep, you cared for me. I mean, just to summarize here, you cared for me when I was naked and hungry and thirsty and sick and in prison. When did we see you naked and hungry and thirsty and sick? As often as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Jesus is identifying himself there with the naked and the hungry that, that we might see around us in our towns. He wants us to enter into that and share God's joy in those situations. What I'm trying to get at is that we, we don't deny the terrible things that happen in the world. We don't let those terrible things define who we are or how we see the world. We don't let those terrible things define how we see the world. We let God define how we see the world. I love this story about this Amish fella. I forget where I heard this story. But it it was this Amish fella, you know, sometimes they'll do tour buses through Amish country. And uh, and it was one of those tour buses of, of what, what do Amish people call non-Amish people? I don't know, Gentiles or something? Anyway, it was a tour bus of non-Amish people going through Amish. And the, so the tour bus stopped and this Amish fella got on the tour bus to talk to the visitors. And I think one of them raised the hand and said, hey, hey, fella, uh, what's... What do you see as the difference between Amish people and, and non-Amish people? And, and so the Amish fella said, um, how many of you have a TV in your house? And everybody on the tour bus raised their hand. And the Amish fella said, how many of you think it would be better for your family if you got rid of that TV? And everybody on the bus raised their hand. And the Amish fella said, that's the difference between you and me. If I think it's better for my family, I'm going to do it. Hmm. There are things that steal our joy, that distract us from what God wants us to understand. 
and experience. Because, well, whatever, they're just distracting. And we love to be distracted by them. And ultimately, they sap our joy. Sometimes we don't experience the joy that the joy that God wants for us because we do things to distract us from it, to remove it from us. Think about the the parable of the prodigal son again. There, there is a party going on at the prodigal son's house. He has come home. They are having a party. There is one character in that story who is not having a good time. And it is the older brother who has heard. Now, he was out in the field for a while, but by now, at the point I'm talking about, he has heard the party and he is refusing to enjoy himself. He won't have it. The father comes out to talk to him. And the product, the, the, this brother, this older brother, says, How long have I been slaving away for you, Dad? And you never gave me so much as a goat to celebrate with my friends. And I love the, the gentleness of the father, how he replies to his older, well, to, to his son. And basically tells him, you don't have any idea who you are. What do you mean to say that you have been slaving away for me? What do you mean to say I never gave you a kid? Don't you know who you are? You are the son of the owner. If you wanted a kid, just go get you a kid. If you want to have a feast, throw the party. Invite whoever you want. It all belongs to you. You haven't been slaving away from me. You are a son, not a slave. Your joy has been taken away because you don't recognize the position that you hold. God wants us to recognize our position. You remember what Revelation 22 verse 5 says? They shall reign with him forever and ever. We are sons and daughters of the King. And when we recognize the position that we hold in this world, that's going to make it easier on the Spirit to produce that fruit of joy in our lives. 